Hey yo everyone, welcome back to a new video on our channel. Today we're going to talk about a group, a band, a legendary one, and one of my personal favorites, like a lot of artists that we talk about on this channel, I present to you Pink Floyd. So between what I knew and what I didn't know, let's dive right into it. Let's go. So to briefly resume what Pink Floyd is, uh, Pink Floyd is a British rock band that formed in London in 1965. The band members uh, include and included uh, Sid Barrett at the beginning, uh, Roger Waters, Nick Mason, Richard Wright and David Gilmour. David Gilmour replaced uh, Sid Barrett in 1968 and I'm going to talk about that later. So Pink Floyd are known in uh, the rock industry and the rock world for their psychedelic and experimental music. They also have uh, iconic album covers and of course iconic band members. They also had a lot of uh, elaborate uh, live shows that became afterwards classics. So the band's origins can be traced a uh, long time ago in London on the London music scene in the early 1960s. At that time, uh, Sid Barrett formed a band called The T-Set in 1963 precisely, which later on became Pink Floyd. The name Pink Floyd actually um, came from two musicians that the group uh, liked and thought um, and wanted to bring back to uh, the front scene. Musicians Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. So their first names made Pink Floyd. So uh, four years later, in 1967, Pink Floyd released their debut album, The Piper at the Gates at Dawn. The album received uh, critical acclaim and established Pink Floyd as one of the best groups in London at that time. But sadly, at that time, uh, Sid Barrett became a little bit too addicted to um, drugs. His erratic behavior started to uh, create issues in the band, and he was eventually replaced by David Gilmour. Of course, uh, the band continued to make extraordinary albums in the 1970s, like Animals, which I actually have in record. Animals, this is the re-edition. They also made Dark Side of the Moon, of course, 1973, I think. The Wall, 1979. We can also talk about Wish You Were Here, that they made in 1975. Great album, too, with five songs. And this album was for Sid Barrett. I'm going to talk, I think, about this a little later on. One of the most iconic moments of Pink Floyd, actually, I didn't uh, personally know this, but um, it's become a cultural phenomenon, that in 1979, for the album The Wall, they made, a, of course, a classic live show, which featured a wall built on stage, and it actually became one of the most uh, successful and one of the most um, cult and memorable performances in rock history. What I knew after the releases of, I think, Atom Hot Mother, uh, Umaguma, and a lot of albums like that, which were a lot of experimental music, uh, they made the Live at Pompeii in 1971. So they traveled to Italy to perform at Pompeii in the legendary arena, in the amphitheater, I should say. But they did it without any audience, which actually was considered to be more powerful than even a million people at the time. That was a quote from uh, the producer of Pink Floyd. And the resulting film, which is a great one, is Pink Floyd Live at Pompeii, became a cult classic. They made about, uh, I think, 15 studio albums that I tried to paint. I've got the painting here. I don't have it in my room, actually, but uh, I made it just a few months ago because I, of course, love Pink Floyd. And uh, so these are all legendary albums. I think I can't find a, a bad one. I've got some that I prefer more than the others. My personal favorite, if I have to talk personally just for a minute, uh, I love Final Cut. It's not their most popular album. Now, let's talk about some few anecdotes about the history of Pink Floyd. Let's get right into it. I have a lot of fun anecdotes, but I'm going to start with a kind of a sad one actually um, when they were making Wish You Were Here this album which uh, actually was meant to be for Sid Barrett uh, in 1975 I think the band enlisted uh, they were actually making their songs in the studio and someone came in and they didn't recognize him at first but it was Sid Barrett just five years after they um, saw him for the last time it was one of the saddest moments for the band of course because Sid had changed so much because of his drug addictions and his mental struggles that they really didn't recognize him at first. Now let's talk about a more fun anecdote about uh, the album Animals that was released um, in the 70s. And in 1970, they made an inflatable uh, pig in San Francisco, which was supposed to float around the stadium. But that pig uh, broke free and uh, flew away. The pig was actually found uh, miles and miles away. It caused a bit of a stir in the news because uh, people in San Francisco were wondering uh, what a floating pig was doing in the middle of the night. But that was just a detail. Now a very simple one that it was quite a predictable one, but um, during the recording of Money, one of the tracks from um, Dark Side of the Moon, the band was looking for a sound of a cash machine, of a cash register. So they went um, nearby to a hardware store 
and recorded the actual sound of a cash register. They did a lot of practical things, so when you hear uh, everything that they made, everything was um, often live because it was on tapes. Now let's talk about the album The Wall. Uh, it's a great album, but there was a lot of problems around the album. Uh, there were a lot of growing tensions between Roger Waters and the rest of the band, Nick Mason, Richard Wright and David Gilmour. At one point, uh, Roger Waters actually threatened uh, drummer Nick Mason to set him on fire, leading uh, Mason to actually bring a lawyer to the studio. Kind of a weird situation. If we talk about um, the album Dark Side of the Moon, once again, it was uh, one of the biggest albums of all time. I think it's the second most um, sold album in the world, even though Pink Floyd is considered uh, experimental music and not really popular music, even though they had such a success. It stayed on the Billboard charts for over 15 years. If we still talk about the Dark Side of the Moon album, uh, the band, even though it had a huge success, always admitted that they had no idea what the album was actually about. They of course said uh, it was about life, about money, about privilege, about society, about uh, a lot of things, about isolation, alienation. But they often referred to it as uh, the Lunatic album because they uh, found um, that they lost their minds trying to make it. Now if I have to get a last, but not least, you're going to see why, anecdote about Pink Floyd that I found. It's the 10th one, I think. It's about Sid Barrett, which uh, left the band so in 1968. So he was known for his uh, eccentric behavior and his on-stage antics. But during one concert, he suddenly stopped playing and began tuning his guitar, oblivious to the rest of the band, of course. When they tried to continue without him seeing that he was in that situation, he actually started to strum uh, random notes and he started to sing I'm a Fish. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you can learn a few things about the band, I hope you did, if you don't know all the albums that they made, you can try and discover a few. Uh, as I said before, my favorite is the final cut, uh, the final cut song from the album also is incredible, I think, in my opinion. I have a few records of the band, I have uh, Animals, which you hear is for Sid Barrett, Animals is inspired by uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm, which was a great book and uh, Roger Waters and the band were actually uh, inspired by the book to make this album. Dark Side of the Moon, of course, is a Classic. It's great music. It's um, more accessible to anyone who actually wants to listen to uh, nice rock music. Uh, the Wall is a very bizarre album, even though it's an amazing album. We can consider it maybe Roger Waters' album, even though, of course, the band plays on it. Roger Waters that uh, wrote all of these songs, the exception of two or three, and of course, Comfortably Numb, and it is great. But there are a few songs that maybe can be a little strange to hear, even though I find, find they are great. Is anybody out there? The Trial also is a very strange and bizarre music but uh, I kind of love the style. Final Cut is great. It's more of a personal album for Roger Waters. He talks about his father in the song for example uh, the Fletcher Memorial because his dad died when he was just a few months old in World War II. And lastly I've got Metal. Metal is great for of course the song Echoes which uh, takes uh, nearly a side of the LP of the record and it's a great album. Well there, you have it. This is the video about Pink Floyd and I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a few things and of course, stay tuned for a lot of videos about new artists, about everything that uh, I love. So I hope that you love this channel as much as I do. See you very, very soon. Have an amazing day. I'm sure you will. Bye-bye.